Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. I'm Archana Mehta, principal of AM Strategies, a marketing and communications firm based in Washington, D.C. I'm a marketing professional by day and mom of twins all the time. I am honored to join Council of Better Business Bureaus on their quest in discovering what truly makes better business. Thank you for joining us at Better Business, Better Series, where we will discuss the heart and climate of doing business better in today's marketplace. This month is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and we have a special two-part series on cybersecurity. Cyber attacks cost businesses more than $400 billion per year and impact 42% of small businesses. Yet, most small businesses don't believe it can happen to them. Today, we are lucky to have an expert in the field, Bill Finelli. Bill is Chief Security Officer for the Council of Better Business Bureaus. He has a wide breadth of information security experience with more than 25 years developing and implementing complex security and monitoring solutions. Welcome, Bill. Glad to be here. So let's talk about the state of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity breaches are happening everywhere right now. Um, we Just before the show, we were just talking about Yahoo and how they um, announced that they'd lost 500 million records. So, so let's talk about this. You just completed a national survey? Yes. We, uh, we went out primarily to small, mid-sized businesses. Um, it's a lot of our membership at the Better Business Bureau. And they've been sort of neglected in the cybersecurity protection space, and we're trying mm-hmm. to figure out how to best put protections in place for them. So you had some interesting results from that. Let's dive into those because um, a lot of businesses don't think that cybersecurity threats and breaches can happen to them. And particularly small businesses, for some reason, they believe that they're not big enough target. And the problem is that the that what's happened in the last five years is all the au- attacks have been automated. And so the robots really don't care how big or small the business is. They're going to try and find a way in, take some data, and bring it out. What are some of the questions that you asked on the survey to pull out this information? Well, we went to the small businesses and we said, how, how big is the problem? Are you seeing no tax? Um, do you care if we come to you and say, here's something you can do? Will you actually mm-hmm. do something about it? Um, and uh, do you understand what the impacts probably are if something does happen in your business? And that might have been the most interesting result, right? Yeah. Um, one particular question we asked was: um, Small businesses don't understand that they behave that they operate in the marketplace differently than consumers. So, if a bad actor gets into my personal banking account mm-hmm. and steals whatever I have in my checking account, that they got my password, the the consumer protection law says the bank has to prove that I was negligent. That that rule doesn't apply to a small business. And forty uh, percent of the businesses came back and said, "Well, yeah, if I left, you know, if somebody stole business uh, money out of my business account, mm-hmm. the bank would pay me back." And and the rules are that it becomes the business's responsibility to demonstrate that the bank was negligent. And generally, you're not going to be able to do that. And so the business loses. Wow, that's fascinating and also eye-opening for businesses. Um, so you found that small businesses do care about They They absolutely breaches. care. Um, they, uh, but there's kind of some tension out there, right? So, so 70% of the businesses say, yes, we, we know that cybersecurity is important. Mm-hmm. But only 40% of them say, we're comfortable with what they're doing about it. Mm-hmm. They they know they need to do something, but the the real problem is they don't know what to do. And so how is this research going to help those businesses? What what are some of the steps that businesses can do? Well, where we're coming from, the BBB is putting together some guidance for businesses. And um, our, our major impact right now is uh, we have a training that we put together called the Five Steps to Better Business Cybersecurity. It's based on the uh, NIST, uh, 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 National Institute of Standard Technology, cybersecurity framework. They went out and asked critical infrastructure businesses, power, banking, water, transportation, what's important. Um, and they cataloged all that. Uh, and then it's got their, the top level of it is called uh, is the functional level. It's identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And mm-hmm. those those are what we refer to as the five steps. And so then we have a, um, a case study that we developed for the training called Leaky Faucet Plumbing, 
and you and then we run scenarios of ransomware and a lost phone through this identify, protect, detect, respond, recover process so that a small business can see that um, it's really about risk management, right? So if the phone is gone, it's locked. You should have it locked, and then you've got less to be concerned about. Uh, if it's not locked, gee, it might be better if you only had 50 emails on there than 200 because if data is lost, you'd rather lose less data than more. So there's some very practical things you can do that if you're not coming at it from a cybersecurity perspective, you, you wouldn't. These things wouldn't necessarily occur to you. Tell me a little bit more about some of these powerful statistics, because one thing that stands out to me is you mentioned only half of small businesses could remain profitable if their data was breached. Yeah, there, there, there's a bunch of statistics that have been floating around the Internet about how long a business would be able to survive. Um, and and um, we went at it and just asked them outright, how long could you stay profitable? Because that's really the, the core of survival. And... Um, and half the businesses said if they lost their customer database like to ransomware or something like that, and then they were not able to recover it, that they would only be able to remain profitable for two months. Wow. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a serious problem. Um, and so I have to throw in backup. You have to backup. You have to backup. You have to backup. Because that's the only way, except for paying the ransom, mm -hmm. to recover from that. You've got to have a copy of it someplace else. Where do, we, where do you recommend? What are those steps? What do you recommend? You say backup, backup, backup. What are those types of places that small businesses should consider? Not, not in their file cabinet, I'm assuming. Right. Well, all right. So, so specifically to, to digital information, you want to have a copy of that data on at least one other copy. The general recommendation, there should be two copies. Uh, one of them needs to be offline because the, in the current attacks, ransomware um, has gotten smart enough that it's going to reach down and encrypt your disk so you can't get to that, but it's also going to find every network connection and encrypt that as well. So if you're, if you're backing up to an external drive that's plugged into your machine, it's going to find that external drive and encrypt your backup as well. So you have to have a backup that's offline. So maybe that file cabinet is a good idea. <laughs> In the end, you know, we call that fiber-based technology. You go back to paper. <laughs> Talk about the number. How how prevalent is this problem of cybersecurity? Um, well, as we were talking about before we came in here, there's in in our data, the fifteen hundred businesses that responded, one in four said that they had experienced a data breach, or not a data breach per se, but but a cyber attack mm -hmm. in the last twelve months. Wow. So it's powerful. that's that's a lot, and it's and I think the numbers are are if you if you take that time window away, it, the the numbers that we see in the literature are like 40, 42 percent say that they've experienced some sort of cyber attack. Um, and that's only when they know it's happened. It could have right. happened even. Uh, yes, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, and it's this is just that it's it's raised to the level where they know something has happened. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of accepted in the cyber industry that if you're online, you've been attacked. There's something on your machine that you didn't put there doing something you'd rather it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, generally, it's doing something that you didn't notice, and so you don't do anything about it. Um, but one in four times in the last 12 months, it rose to the level where the businesses that reported in our survey had to do something about it. What other points of interest did you find? Council of Better Business Bureaus have published a, a really powerful white paper. What is... Um, what are some of the other learnings? The one thing that I found that I personally found interesting, 80% of the businesses said that if, if they had a breach, if their customer data was lost or their employee data was lost, mm -hmm. that they would immediately notify everybody who was impacted. Um, and at, at a personal level, I find that absolutely laudable. Mm -hmm. At a cybersecurity professional level, that is terrifying um, because data breach notification is a very complex legal process. There's 47 different state laws, and each one of them are different. Uh. And there's timelines and what you have to do and what you have to offer. And if you do it wrong, there's penalties. Um, and, and this is not something that you should do without consulting your legal counsel. Mm -hmm. um, and it is not, and, and, and you should be consulting your legal counsel before that moment where you right. need to. Right. So 
eighty percent of them of the businesses said, "I'd go tell everybody right now," but only twenty percent of them have a plan for how to do that. Wow. Um, everybody needs to go talk to your attorney today mm-hmm. and find out what it is that needs to be done, and then be prepared to put together a plan. Put together a plan yeah. and, and have that attorney's phone number on your speed dial for in that unfortunate moment if you need it, but mm-hmm. that it's not a you're not surprised by the things you need to do and you wind up doing things that wind up being yeah. disadvantageous to your business and to your customer. So you mentioned the five steps to better business security training that's um, available to small businesses. What about the white paper that you just published? If anybody wants to get a copy of that, you can go to bbb.org slash state of cybersecurity and download it there. It's got everything we talked about here and, and lots more detail. Bill Finelli is Chief Security Officer for the Council of Better Business Bureaus. For our listeners, if you have any additional questions around cybersecurity in small businesses, you can send an email to five steps at council.bbb.org. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And to our listeners, we hope you will join us for our second series later this month. You just enjoyed Better Business, Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.